Hi, so I'm Thomas, co-founder and CEO of Ruby. Uh, thank you for having me today. Ruby uses AI to optimize grid-connected battery storage. And when you think about grid-connected battery storage, I want you to think of batteries attached to the grid that are large enough to power either tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of homes for the period of a couple of hours. But before we go into how we optimize grid-scale battery storage, I just want to share the background of myself and my co-founder. So I met Derek freshman year at Hopkins because we were the two freshmen who were taking graduate-level mathematics courses together. But Derek actually comes from an energy trading family office. So Derek placed his first energy commodities trades at age 18, approximately 10 years ago. But after graduation, he decided that he didn't want to work for his family's family office. Instead, he worked for Meta, including doing some work with Meta's early foundation models. And then he was the first technical hire at Adept AI, where his models were used to raise over $400 million. Um, one of the reasons why I love working with Derek is he decided to become a founder because he's that rare technical persona that absolutely wants to take customer feedback, positive or negative, without taking it personally and implement it into a product. Meanwhile, I left Hopkins and started a pure mathematics PhD at University of Cambridge, but I was spending more time doing wind farm layout optimization and wind generation forecasting than theoretical statistics modeling, so I dropped out to, to start in balance with Y Combinator in winter 21. We sold our price forecasts to utilities, including Enel, in order to optimize their battery storage assets. And then I sold in balance to a company called STEM in January of 2023. And then I was director of product at STEM for approximately a year and a half in their battery storage and energy market forecasting practice. So that's who we are. Um, I, I like giving the context of our backgrounds because I, I really believe that it's pretty rare to see an opportunity in the market based on your market expertise. That sounds a bit crazy if you're from the outside, but only because of the amount of time that you've spent in the energy industry we're able to see could become a $10 billion business. So if you're not familiar with electricity markets, in approximately 67% of North America and most of Europe, electricity market prices change every five minutes, sometimes by 300% or more. So a wind farm is a price taker. You can't control whether or not the wind's blowing. You get paid whatever the current cost of electricity is for your wind generation. Meanwhile, you can control when a battery releases its power to the grid, but the battery only stores so much power per day. So if you have an hour of charge in the battery and you dispatch the power from that battery system even just half an hour too late, you could forfeit more than half of your revenue for that day. Right? And as a matter of fact, if you look at the earnings of battery storage facilities in Texas, the delta between the top performing battery storage facilities and the worst performing battery storage facilities is approximately 4x. So what does our business do? And this is a, a little bit non-traditional, but one of my key insights, both by building Imbalance and working at STEM, is the fact that the more batteries within a market that use your optimization system, the worse it performs. And that's because if you sell a SaaS product and you take a best-in-class optimization solution and you give it away to half of the market, every battery within a geography is directly competitive, so the revenue is self-defeating. So instead, what we do is we rent out battery storage and we take 100% of the upside associated with the storage facilities that we manage. And we've got a couple of advantages here. First of all, on the back end, our artificial intelligence is Bayesian in nature. And uh, one thing that most people don't realize about the electricity grid is it's by far the most volatile commodities market that you'll see. It would be as if a stock market crash is basically guaranteed to happen on the order of three to seven times per year. And battery storage facilities make most of their revenue in a year on the days when the grid goes into crisis. So what we do is we predict the probability that the grid is going to go into crisis on every, any given day, because if there's even just a 10% chance that 5% of your revenue for the year could come between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. tomorrow, you better be able to operate when the grid needs you the most. Uh, the, the other interesting piece here is if you look at the top performing revenue facilities in a market like Texas, the strategy of the top performing battery assets is very different. So if you're selling a SaaS product and you give each customer a different solution, that's a bit bizarre. 
But if you've got a portfolio of projects that you're wholly responsible for managing, then within your portfolio, you can manage risk by assigning different strategies to different batteries that you manage. So what does this actually look like? I, I mentioned before that the revenue delta between top performing battery assets and the worst performing battery assets is approximately 4x. And there are a couple of factors for this, including the location within the market like Texas, where the battery is located, um, and definitely the outage schedule associated with the asset. But the biggest lever in determining how much revenue you can pull from a battery storage facility is actually the optimization decision in terms of how the battery interacts with the electricity market. Right, so we can take a battery storage facility that's currently earning on the order of, say, $90,000 per megawatt per year. We're able to rent out that battery storage facility for on the order of $80,000 per megawatt per year for two reasons. We're taking on the cost of the optimization of the facility, and we're also providing a revenue hedge, right? The $90,000 per megawatt per year is variable, whereas the $80,000 per megawatt per year that we're paying in rental fees is fixed. Right, so the, the developer is able to lock in their profit for several years. And from that same asset, we're able to drive approximately $180,000 in revenue per year. So we can say, take a bottom quartile battery storage asset and produce 75th percentile revenues from the system, more than doubling the rental fee that we're paying for the battery asset, and per megawatt taking back to Ruby approximately $100,000 per megawatt per year. So from a, a market perspective, what does that look like? So currently, there are 30 gigawatts of battery storage in just the United States. If we're able to capture approximately 3% of the market over the course of the next couple of years, we'll be producing over $100 million in revenue back to Ruby. The storage installation in the past 12 to 18 months has actually doubled. So the market's growing extremely quickly. And this is a, another insight. So the, the batteries attached to the grid have most of their revenue driven by the volatility of the electricity grid. Effectively, the more volatile the grid is, the more revenue a battery is able to make because the battery is directly exposed to the minimum price of electricity in a day compared to the peak price of electricity in the day. So in the average North American electricity grid, that volatility has increased by 160% over the course of the past five years. So battery storage assets, from a bird's eye view, are actually becoming more valuable. The, the last piece that I'd like to mention here is the fact that most of our customers are battery storage developers. So you can think of real estate developers that specialize in building power facilities, but aren't necessarily experts in managing the power facilities. So we're really able to take our risk-aware optimization solution and drive a more stable, higher revenue stream than these asset managers would be able to procure themselves. And at the same time, they take our stable revenue stream and they use it to raise debt financing so that they can build more projects more quickly. So a number of the projects that we can back with our stable revenue stream wouldn't even be built if they weren't able to secure debt capital using our stable revenue stream over time. But if you want to look at our motives as founders for building this business, I really point to three reasons. Battery storage is extremely important to the stability of the grid. Right? Uh, with intermittent renewables online, battery storage is essential to make sure that there's power when people need it the most. Two, batteries are an important part of the clean energy picture, as in both on a one minute, a one hour, and a one day time horizon, whenever there's a gap in renewable energy production, battery storage facilities are able to make up that gap by charging when there's a surplus of clean energy and then discharging when there's a deficiency in clean energy. And finally, batteries literally move power, clean, affordable power, from intervals where there's a surplus to intervals where there's not enough, and we're able to pass on the, those savings through the grid back to the consumer. So where is Ruby now? We actually started this past April. Uh, we went through the Y Combinator batch this summer, and during the batch, we were able to become a, a regulated power company in under two months. We're now earning revenue at a projected rate of approximately $130,000 per year. And we haven't disclosed this publicly yet. This will be the first time, but we just closed a $4 million seed round in order to rent out 20 megawatts of battery storage. And over the course of the next six to eight months, start producing revenue on the order of a couple million dollars per year. So anyways, thank you for having me. We're Ruby. Thank you.